again for a new point. Get your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! You're interrupted and are suddenly fighting who you believe is tops. It turns out that heavy maintenance worker has built a small mech out of forklifts and is by your side. The regular maintenance worker is now behind the wheel of the crane. Granted, he's not a driver, but considering the crane only moves forwards and backwards, you'd imagine that wouldn't be much of an issue for him. Dubs doesn't seem like your average mobster, namely because he's carrying that incredibly heavy pillar as if it were a toothpick, and the fact that he was able to shrug off a suplex from a friggin' robot. He tried to ram him with his own pillar when he dropped it, but it was too heavy and you weren't able to gain enough momentum to hit him. He just caught it and shook you off. Basically let one of the maintenance workers handle that thing. However, you were able to punch him, and since your hands still reek a fish, you got a noticeable reaction out of him. He slapped you off the side of the offices, though. Good thing the maintenance worker wasn't that crane. Embarrassingly, all of your weapons are next to tops. If you're going to try and get one, you're going to have to come in within the swinging range of that pillar, and you're pretty certain a full power swing from that would most definitely kill you on contact. Uh, mood status and inventory, please. You have to admit, you don't have much reason to be legitimately mad at tops. Still, all the fighting from earlier has really warmed you up, giving you access to the underwear and rope. Aside from the worthless shotgun, all your items are currently below your position on mood ring and are inaccessible, unless you find an immediate way to calm yourself down. Besides, you're not holding on to anything particularly special. Just some water, your phone, as well as the Merlot and matchbook. Not to mention your MP3 player, but at this point your chances of getting it seem just as likely as the shotgun. All of your useful items are over by tops. You really need to get to them if you want to have any chance of even defending yourself. Have the heavy maintenance worker grapple tabs over the hatch, then open it up. You've got an idea. You tell the heavy maintenance worker to try and charge tabs as before, but this time maneuver him over the hatch so you can open it and drop him into the vat of ghoul located down below. The heavy maintenance worker demonstrates his approval by slamming onto tabs again at full tilt sending them both back into the machine bay. They should both come back out real soon, hopefully with the heavy maintenance worker being the one that's doing the pushing. You head on over to collect some of your weapons. You hope this idea works. Well, you want to hope at least. Reclaim implements of destruction slash bodily hygiene. You grab all of your weapons, except the marble. It's a bit too awkward to carry with everything else. And move them over next to the crane. The crane operator should pick up the pillar and just kinda let it sit there, in the air. You will your trusty mace as the maintenance worker grabs the pillar. You'll probably bait tops with it if you can't get the heavy maintenance worker to push him over the hatch. He rests the pillar on the crane for the time being. Chuck the candle on that spilled whiskey. You wield the candle in your other hand and go over to the whiskey puddle. Thanks to your increased knowledge in the very prestigious field of cleaning chemistry, you figure there's enough alcohol in there to sustain the flame. It won't burn as hot as a normal fire, but it'll definitely be hot enough to combust anything immediately over it, including Tops' feet. You move to light the puddle on fire. The hell kind of whiskey is this? Uh, untie that man. You remove the tape and rope. This guy seems to be one of the livelier ones and thanks you profusely for untying him. He introduces himself as a supervisor. He asks you if you've seen any general workers around the area. He wants to rally them together and make an assault to put a stop to all this. You're not sure how it'll help, but you tell him of the bunch of guys hiding out down in the kitchen. He thanks you again and heads off. Whiskey puddle. Spontaneously combust. Alright, time to light the puddle. Oh. Well then? Wonder why Tabs hasn't interrupted you while you're doing all this. You return to the crane and swap out your candle for the axe. It's taken them an awfully long time to get back out here. Tabs, interrupt while she's doing all this. Wait, here they come now! Uh... You have to admit that you're beginning to fear for your life a little bit over here. Wipe your hands on the underwear and throw it in his face. You pull the rope and underwear out of your inventory. Underwear looks pretty clean. 
Ah, not anymore. You take the smell off your hands and put it on the underwear. Just need to get it on his face now. Use that one range attack you have with the mace. If you're lucky, it might catch him off guard enough to make him draw the back. I mean, honestly, who expects someone to use a mace head as a little baseball? You can use your one and only mace tag, but you have a feeling that just hitting him won't really accomplish anything. Granted, nobody expects a mace ball to the gut, but to give him credit, you weren't expecting him to walk in carrying a giant robot. A shattered body doesn't look like it surprised him, especially since you've been in his full view this entire time. He's currently strafing around the fire. You gotta do something special for him. Wrap under a surround mace, pop fly him in the face. Hmm. Now we're talking. Been slain in battle. Tut, throw a mech at her in retaliation. Tut flings the mech at you, but you quickly duck down and dodge it. You need to think of something to do, and quick, before Tut comes down and starts acting more or less rationally again. Your hands no longer smell of fish, the ball of your mace is next to Tut's, and the heavy maintenance worker is most likely out of commission for a very long time. You're not sure things can get much worse. Turn the maze back into a can of maze, then back into a medieval maze to replace the head. You doubt logic works that way. Spraying someone with maze makes sense, but spraying them with maze handle? Not so much. Your maze needs to be in one piece in order for you to make any use of it as intended. One of the most important lessons you've ever learned is that the whole world can act as your weapon if need be. You just need a little ingenuity to look in the right places. In the meantime, You've got access to the half-empty bottle of water. That whole display shook you up a bit. It's sorta of cancelling out any heat you were feeling and is bringing you back down onto the green. Taunt him, despite the obvious threat this action would pose to your continued well-being. Even if you wanted to taunt him, he seems too focused on getting the smell off of himself to pay you any attention. You can certainly take advantage of this, but it looks like it's going to have to require you to physically do something. You could try throwing the mace handle at him, or maybe think of a new way to attack. You're grasping at straws here. Wait, where did the mech go after you dodged it? The mech fell over the edge of the offices. The maintenance worker managed to catch it, but judging from that beating it took, you're not sure what shape it'll be in should it be hoisted back up to resume fighting. Hell, you're not even sure that the heavy maintenance worker is still alive in there. Tell the crane guy to set the mech down safely as quickly as possible, so that he can be ready to drop the bucket on Tubbs ASAP. He won't be disrupted forever, even if you let him deal with the stink before you mace him. You tell the maintenance worker to drop the mech where it is and go get another vat of black goo. The heavy maintenance worker will most likely be safer down on the bottom level, where he'll be out of harm's way until he's able to make a return. The maintenance worker is reluctant, but ultimately agrees. It'll take him a bit of time to return with the vat, so until then, you'll be going it alone. So, if the crane has the mech, where did he put the pillar? The maintenance worker placed the pillar on top of the crane. Tops won't be able to reach it while the crane is gone. And he's off. Now it's up to you to last until he gets back. Run up and grab the head so you can fix the mace. And turn it into a can of mace. Wait or stall as long as feasible, then spray it directly into his face. This is the only conceivable way for Connie to even inconvenience him. You sneak up while Tops is doing whatever he's doing and grab the ball of your mace. You'll spray him when he turns around. You also grab the marble while you're at it. Sneak up on Tops and make him touch your mood ring in order to access your shotgun. Tops is starting to calm down, so you quickly go up behind him and lightly bump him on the back of the head with your mood ring. No change. You suppose in order for the ring to actually detect people's mood rather than their body temperature, it needs to be on their finger, or at least off of yours. Either that, or Tops isn't mad enough to be setting the air on fire around him. Chalk up another friggin' failure to get the one thing that will save everyone's asses. You quickly notice that Tops has turned around and is facing you, so you mace him. In a face. Face mace. Tops' brow is too furrowed for the maze to get into his eyes. 
damn it! Since you rose rather close to him, you catch a glimpse of the thing on his back. It bears an uncanny resemblance to that awful soap grenade you had to deal with earlier. Which means that this guy was the asshole who put it there! Just who does this fat lard think he is? Thinks you're enough of a ditz to trick with a goddamn bottle of water and a sappy note? Is he stupid? Is he a jerk? He's probably both, isn't he? That's how they are. That's how they always are. You want to introduce him to your ex really, really badly. But it doesn't take a fool to know that anyone with strength like that will probably just shrug it off. That might just be one of the few guys you've ever met who actually stand up for themselves when they piss you off. And that just makes it worse. And you still can't reach the fucking shotgun. This is hopeless. You're hopeless. You're doing it again. You need to stop this. You psychotic bitch, last time was a fish, this time could be something worse. No, nobody gets this mad this easily, you need to stop! Throwing into the firewall, Tops is distracted. We don't know if it works that way or not, but really, at this point if you don't do anything, you're screwed anyways. Use the mace handle to pull it out of the fire after it's warmed up. Not yet, not yet. Nobody takes advantage of you. You brought the shotgun with you. And you are going to use it. You will be a hero. Throwing this piece of shit into a fire will get you your shotgun for you. You can't stand lose a finger. You want your goddamn water. What the hell is going on now? The puddle is glowing again. More distractions. Blue Boys poses a team because she just got conflagrated. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. You're glad Hussell was able to put himself in flesh out quickly. You weren't even aware you could come in through a puddle that was somehow on fire. There's Tubbs. You've got to break the news to him as nicely as you can. Tubbs? Wilt flush in lieu of your pillar. Before I can say anything, Tubbs grabs flush with the leg, raises him high into the air, and brings him down harder than someone behind you. What's the girl doing here of all places? Was she trained to fight tubs? She'd certainly have been killed by that swain if it weren't for that helmet she was wearing. You're okay. You're okay. You just need to take a moment for the pretty galaxies and flashing lights to go away so you can figure out why they call it tapioca and finish your staring contest with the floor. It's winning so far and acting like a really smug bastard and you really want to show it up. Flush, vomit on Jose in response to your new concussion. Surprisingly, Flush has already showed it off. He tells you that this is a recurring thing and he learned to get used to it. You believe him as he seems to be perfectly fine. If he wasn't, he'd have accumulated some sort of brain damage over the long term, right? Right? Tubbs is walking off. You ask him where he's going. He says he's going to rub out that girl so she doesn't bother you and the other fellows anymore. You tell him that you would seriously prefer it if he could just not murder anyone while the job's being done, not having any unnecessary deaths as the humane way to do it. Tubbs walks over to you. Look, I know you hate it, but it's what me and the boys do. It gets results. I guarantee you, we'd be done if we did this whole thing my way. But, since this whole job's on your terms, I guess I might as well play nice. There. If there's one quality you like about Tubbs, is that he always sticks by his agreements. Slick, break the news as lightly as you can. Tubbs seems to be not in the best mood. You told Tubbs that you guys need to pack up and leave, so that the job will get done elsewhere. It's not a good idea to keep taking the water from this location, and would be much safer if you guys were to finish elsewhere. Somehow, Tubbs face softens up a bit. He seems more disappointed than angry. Now that's just impolite. I agree to do things by the book. And then you go around changing it? Can't have any of that. We're finishing what we started. Right here. He seems pretty resolute. Hopefully there's some way you can convince him otherwise. This is a bit problematic. Everyone originally agreed to set up here, take the water, and leave. Making sure to subdue anyone who interfered. You never informed Tubbs about the possibility that you might have to pack up and move somewhere else. At this point, you figure it might be best not to finish taking the water and just 
Leave with what you've got. Surely it's more than enough. Hell, with Sirtisan unit you might actually have been done by now. But you're not sure that Tubbs will comply. Ask Tubbs how much extra it would cost to get him to go along with your new plan. While you're all getting something out of this, Tubbs is striving for something a little bit more specific. You doubt he'll be able to sway him by offering him anything else, and you're pretty certain that he'll snap you in half if you don't let him take what he deserves once you get enough water. You tell him that this isn't really about the water, it's about the goo that's been showing up all over the place, you have no idea what this shit's actually made of, but you don't want to take any more chances dumping it here if it's starting to get everywhere. It's highly acidic, and someone could seriously get hurt. And? Wow. He really doesn't care. You haven't mentioned the whole derelicts bit to anyone yet, but you think that even if you told Tubbs, he still wouldn't give a damn. You've got to change his mind. The whole time during briefing you've never questioned the harps about what the goo actually was, and now you're beginning to seriously regret it. Oh god, your head! This is the worst headache you've ever had since you jumped around on that electrical panel. You're having trouble remembering how we got over here. You were angry at something for some reason, and now you're suddenly making out with the floor. At least it's not a fish or some guy hanging under a railing for dear life. You need to control yourself. Violence certainly gets results, but in the end it's everyone that loses. You've been acting seriously chaotic lately, when you probably should have just found a way to chill out. This isn't healthy. Your mood ring also seems to have reset itself. Makes sense, considering your mind is pretty much a cloudy mush at the moment. Hmm. Baby steps, Connie. Roll over so you can at least see some of what's going on. Don't try to think about things too quickly, or you'll just get all confused. Uh, maybe start dragging yourself out of the way of the crane. You slowly roll off the tracks. You think you're starting to get a grip as to what's going on here? Your pot falls apart. Oh well, at least it wasn't your skull. Concerned citizen, roll closer to them, play unconscious so you can listen in. You drag yourself closer to dick and gloves. You can't see much with your face against the ground, but they seem to be arguing about gooey things. Slick, suggest forcing the workers hold up in the offices to research ways to come back the black goo for you. You go do whatever the hell you want. I'm not your babysitter. Whatever, Tubbs. You suppose this would be the most ideal thing to do next, provided you're able to actually get the workers to cooperate, which you seriously doubt. Unless they'll immediately come down with a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome, you have a feeling you'd be more likely getting your back up your head reintroduced to a statue hammer. Just give him what he wants and leave. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Slick, I thought you were an alright guy. Wears a diving suit in broad daylight, has all this voodoo machinery, even puts an ad in the friggin' classifieds asking for some wise guys to assist. Yeah, you suppose that was a bit of a stupid move. Slick, I thought you seemed like the kind of guy who deserved a little respect. I don't give two shits about what you do. I could have easily torn your spine out and just stolen those gadgets of yours. But I like to enjoy a little honest work now and then. Only fun I can't see. Wait, he's not actually choking you. I'm the boss here, and you don't give me what I want, I take it. And if you're gonna try to give me your life once it early because you think I'll stop, then I'm afraid I'll just have to take a little something else, capiche? What a psychopath. You'd be perfectly fine with giving him something else. It's just that, considering the direction this conversation just took, you can't help but imagine that this something else might just be one of your vital organs. You could try running away, but you need time to pack up the porthole if you're to actually secure what water you've got. It'd take a little while, which is more than enough time for Tabs to catch up and bring you, if his suspicions are correct. How <sighs> messed up are some of these people? You should probably just try to keep going, and hope he gets killed by some third party. Well, whatever. I'm gonna go somewhere else. You're putting me to sleep. And they're off. Just like that. You've got to wonder how those two managed to stick with a guy like Tabs. Are they even given a choice? Slick, 
Too bad you don't know about any weaknesses tubs might possess, such as an aversion to the smell of fish. If you did, you might be able to come up with some kind of plan to stop him. Times has definitely been vocal regarding his extreme hate of fish, something to do with his sub figure. Either way, you're fairly certain he is not the kind of guy who would be childish enough to let a silly thing like fish stop him from pulling complex heists and stealing thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of material. It certainly seems like the interesting thing to use against him, though. Unfortunately, you haven't the slightest idea where you can even find a fish near here. Hang on. Is someone screaming? Crane up. Have a big damn hero moment with the goo rat. Plan? Backfire horribly. <sighs> this is depressing. Wait, what's that behind you? This thing? On the floor? It looks like a broken remains of a glass beverage container. Someone must have dropped and broken it on the ground. It can't unscrew in the puddle let you arrive right through. Check on the girl. See if she is okay or not. Hmm. She did take quite a hit from Tubbs. Even though you guys are kinda on opposite sides here, you suppose the least you could do would be to see if she's okay. Whoops, I forgot about the crane. You must admit you have no idea what's currently going on. Something about the disagreement between Tubbs and Sleek and now there's silence, more or less. You're hearing people walk around and the sound of metal striking metal dangerously close to your head. You turn over, but they're probably all just standing right in front of you, waiting for you to move. And then you would, and it'd get all awkward. Slick, scoop and splash water over the concerned citizen with the broken beverage container. Use puddle tech to move her out of crane range. This is the best idea. You don't even want to bother trying to pal around with all the people who get unbounded. You might as well get the girl and get out of here. She's probably the only one who would even possibly be willing to help you. You can bend down and quickly gather as much water as you can in the container. You also take a mental note that you should probably fill up a couple of simple vials of your own when things are less pressing. Nothing more useful to you than an instant bottle. Hmm. Ah, good enough. You've got her! Now you need a place to run off to before the crane puts a hole in you. Crane up! Oh shit, a hostage situation! Holy shit, hostage situation! The worker flips out and makes a dash for the offices, no doubt to get reinforcements. Still, this gives you a minute to take a look around before you run off. But all's fine, but where to? I suggest maybe somewhere near the basement so Slick has a better argument position to convince her to work with him to stop the goo. You need to take her mind off the water and focus it more on the goo. If you get out in the basement, not only will you be able to show her what you're talking about, but you might be able to shut off the porthole down there that's been spewing all this stuff out in the first place. If you can shut it off and stop releasing the goo, then you can just finish taking the water and leave, and everyone will be happy. Provided you can find a different place to dump the stuff yourself. Oh well. Bottle first, other stuff later. Never mind. Apparently there are no puddles in the basin for you to come in through, which is incredibly unusual, considering that the basin is where all the water exits and enters the waterworks. You're not entirely sure what's going on. But that's not a problem ever since your last suit upgrade. By strengthening your suit's spatial distortion, one of the new abilities that you've gained to will be rather useful in this situation. The ability that you use to traverse space via puddles is called spatial transport and it's a required ability that everyone starts with. However, one of your newest abilities is called Spatial Transport 2. See where this is going? You're no longer limited to puddles. You can appear and disappear via any body of water. Hell, you could probably teleport in and out of thin air if the humidity in the room was high enough. It's still somewhat limited, as there is a maximum distance that you can travel, but there's no way in hell you're using your other teleport ability, Dimensional Hopper. You have no control over where you end up. Regardless, even though there are no puddles, there definitely is some water down there. You're not entirely sure what form of water, but you can use it to ascend the trail to the basement. But you must admit it's rather perplexing how there's water but no puddles down there. It might be easier to take the long route for once and just take the elevator near the back of the machine bay. 
You surely will be fine either way, though. Everyone's gone for the time being. So, it's either teleport in blindly or take the long route. Then again, before you do all that, you could probably spend a minute checking out the crane. You've never seen anything like it before. There's a few items by it, too. They might belong to the girl. Would it not count as a puddle if the entire basement was filled with water? That's why you're worried. Any relatively flat and disturbed body of water will technically count as a puddle. And yet there are none. Check her for weapons. She might attack you again. Yeah, you don't want to do all that again. You pull that stupid mace of her, as well as some sort of axe. You'll hold on to these. For now. Go ahead and check out the crane. You should pick up her weapons and stuff. Doesn't hurt to be prepared. You head on over to the crane. You see Tubbs' spiller on it. As well as a candle, a crowbar, and... Uh, your harpoon! Oh man, you finally found your harpoon! These workers must have had it this whole time! Looks like they never figured out how to use it properly either. Oh well. They're lost. You stash your harpoon, the candle, and the crowbar. You're going to leave Tubbs' pillar where it is, though. He's bound to come by it eventually. Stretching your legs never hurts anyone. Just take the long route. Better play it safer now. It's worth the short walk. The elevator is just on the other end. You enter the machine bay. Slick, look around. Pretty standard. There's some shelves and boxes. The bigger stuff isn't until you get a little further in. If Tub spends some time in here, then there's no doubt he'll have trouble finding anything that's still functioning. Concerned citizen. Attack. Yeah, being kidnapped isn't on your schedule for today. You don't have your weapons, but you think you'll be able to surprise Slick with a blow to the back of the head, which should give you enough time to escape back to the offices. Sorry. It wasn't difficult to realize that you were only pretending to be unconscious. You probably want to murder me for what I've done. But you've been hurt and need to rest. I'm taking us to the elevator that goes down to the basement. Feel free to do whatever you want once we're inside. For now, please rest, if not for your well-being, then mine. I'm sorry. <laughs>